Let's take a look at three different approaches to using colored pencils. The first one is using hatching and cross hatching. Hatching is where the lines that you make go in the same direction and cross hatching is where the lines cross over each other. We're going to use a combination of hatching and cross hatching to build up the colors on the surface with colored pencils. In this case we begin with a local color which is green and then we start to establish some of the shadows with a cooler tone. In this case it's blue. The more that the lines cross over each other the more intense the color gets. You can also expect some optical color mixing to happen here too. Since we're layering the blue over the top of the green some areas of blue green develop. Now on the side where the light source is coming from, we're going to add some yellow. Here again, we're just hatching and cross hatching that yellow directly on top of the green. This is going to create some areas of yellow green and help establish the illusion of a light source. We'll make that light source a little bit more intense by cross hatching some white over the top of the yellow green. Now we'll make our shadowed side just a little bit darker by hatching and cross hatching some brown over the top of the blue green that we've already established on the sphere. Next we'll make those tones just a bit cooler by again layering blue on top of what we've already established. By repeating this process our color gets more intense and more convincing. We can go over it all by layering the original local color, in this case green, over the entire sphere. We can still see the marks that we've created by using hatching and cross hatching, but some of the color mixes a little bit easier here. We'll also need to establish a cast shadow. In this case we'll start with blue. and then we'll layer over it with dark brown. Doing this creates a more natural looking shadow as opposed to using a color like black. So there's a look at using hatching and cross hatching. Another method is by layering local colors. In this case, we'll begin by layering the local color onto the surface. We'll use two slightly different variations of green. We'll cover over almost the entire surface area of the sphere. Next, we'll begin to layer in some of the areas of coarse shadow with a dark blue over the top of the green. Some natural color mixing will occur. To create a smooth application, you may consider making your marks in small circular directions. After the blue has been established, we'll layer over some of the highlighted side of the sphere using a yellow. Because we want to create a smooth gradation of value and color, we're going to use small circular strokes here again. Next, a white is used to establish a strong highlight. This white is layered over the top of the yellow. As layers are added to the drawing, the surface will become more waxy because of the binder in the pencil. This allows for a process called burnishing which creates smooth transitions of value and color with the colored pencils. Depending on the tooth or texture of your paper, the more layers you may have to add. A stronger tooth or heavier texture will force you to put more layers to get to that burnishing stage. In this example, I'm using Canson Mitant's paper, which is designed for pastel, but in this case it works great with the colored pencils as well. 
a bit of texture will be left in the finished drawing. After I've established the shadows and highlights, I'll revisit the sphere by layering over the top with a local color. I can make the shadows darker by layering brown on top of the green. Lastly, a layer of blue can cool down the tones in the core shadow. We'll also add a cast shadow underneath the sphere here as well. We'll begin with a dark blue. Then we'll layer on top of that dark blue with a dark brown. Another way to use the colored pencils is to create somewhat of an underpainting. In this case, we'll begin by establishing just the values that exist on the sphere. In this example, I'll establish the values with a dark brown. With this technique, only focus on the values in the beginning stages. In other words, I'm just looking at where the dark areas and the light areas exist on the sphere. In the dark areas, I'm putting more pressure on the pencil to put down more material on the surface. I'll establish a cast shadow underneath the sphere in this drawing as well. Here again, sticking with the brown. Once my values have been determined, I can layer on top of those values using the local color. Here again, the local color is green. I can put more pressure on the pencil here because some of my undertones are already established. I want the lighter values of the local color to mix with the shadowed areas. Since more pressure is put on the pencil using this technique, more of the waxy binder will transfer to the surface. This will allow for burnishing earlier in the process. We'll establish the highlight here by layering white over the top of the local color. Next, we can address the shadow and make the cast shadow a little bit darker by layering blue over the top of the brown. We can also clean up the edges with a sharp dark brown pencil if we choose to do so.